Hey, what's up everybody, this is Muth24, and today I'm taking a look at the Cold Protocol, which is the third and final novel in this little box set collection that I have. Um, I've done reviews previously of Contact Harvest and Ghosts of Onyx, and this is a nice little package uh, that I think I paid maybe like 15 bucks for in total. You get three novels, they're obviously these smaller um, paperback collections, I forget what these uh, sizes are referred to, but... Um, you get the smaller versions, but they are bound really well. You got some nice cover art there. There are actually two of these, to my knowledge, at the moment. Uh, these box sets. What one of them being uh, this one, obviously, and the other one being the uh, first three novels that came out, which were Fall of Reach, um, The Flood, and I forget the name of the third book, but it was all dealing with Master Chief and uh, the other Spartans that he teamed up with prior to the events of the games. So, uh, there's that box set as well. I think they both go for around the same price. That one might have the uh, larger bindings of the, of the books, where they're like slightly taller, you know, maybe like normal novel size. I don't remember for sure. Uh, but either way, I think it's a really great value for uh, the number of books you get and how thick they are, because they're all uh, like at least 350 pages a piece. So, they're, they're decently thick books. Um, they do read pretty fast, which I appreciate. Uh, the chapter setup for each of these is a little bit different. Um, I felt like Cold Protocol had some relatively short chapters, um, but that made it so that I could jump in, cruise through a good chunk of the book, set it down, come back to it, and, uh, you know, not have lost my place or anything. Uh, and I did, I didn't read all these books back to back per se, but when I did sit down and read a single one of them, I burned through the book in about a week or less. Um, you know, just kind of sitting down and read it when I had free time. Uh, the Cold Protocol was one that I had the least knowledge going into. The other two I kind of knew about. I had a lot of friends recommend Ghost of Onyx to me, uh, and Contact Harvest, I, I kind of got a general idea of what was going to happen there. Uh, the Cold Protocol was interesting in the fact that it is about Jacob Keys. Uh, it is also about Thel Vidam, who would later become the uh, Arbiter in the main trilogy of Halo games. Uh, and then it's about Spartan Grey Team, which is sort of this behind the scenes, kind of black ops Spartan team. Uh, they're, they, they don't exist on paper. I mean, there's a lot of Spartan groups that are set up that way, but uh, these guys are operating on board this thing called the Rubble, which is a collection of asteroids that are connected by different tubes, and there are a bunch of um, people living on there that survived uh, a big battle in the earlier days of the Human Covenant War, and are sort of operating in this area that's just on the rim of where uh, human-controlled space is, and the territory that is sort of foreign foreign space to them is, is sort of unsafe, uh, given how much the Covenant is expanding and trying to seek out the humans and destroy them. Um, so we have a younger Jacob Keys here, not super young, it's not like his first rodeo uh, going into this fight, but um, we do kind of get a sense of how he became such a respected uh, commander in the... Uh, UNSC, and how he sort of got to be recognized as pulling these crazy uh, out-of-left-field strategies to protect his crew and make sure that secrets of locations of Earth and other colonies didn't get back to the Covenant. So that's kind of cool. Um, we also have, obviously, Thelvedon, I mentioned, uh, him being a more... Um, what's the word? I'm a fanatical... Um, elite at this point, um, being very uh, deeply rooted in the Sanghealy ways and the uh, rules of the Covenant. And there is some uh, questioning brought up by the other elites and some of the grunts and jackals uh, as to, you know, who's really pulling the strings of the Covenant. Uh, we get a little taste of what would later come in the games with the um, changing of the guard from the elites to the brutes. But, uh, you know, we get the sense that the elites are very proud of their position in the Covenant, um, and that they don't get along with the Brutes at all, and that even the the uh, Jackals, the Kigyar, they don't really get along with them all that well, but the Grunts, they do get along with relatively well, and they sort of have a, a strange degree of respect for them, because obviously they are the foot soldiers, the sort of, um, you know, minions, if you will, of the Covenant. Um, but that said, it is an interesting look at those two sides. And then the Spartan Grey team... Um, goings on is interesting in the sense that it's this uh, very small scale environment that we're working with, uh, but we do have both the Covenant and the Insurrectionists 
as threats to the UNSC, as threats to uh, the stability of what they are trying to um, keep intact with the Covenant, sort of releasing this onslaught onto human colonies and human-controlled space. Um, we do get a look at sort of how ramshackle this uh, place called the Rubble is, how um, kind of run down some of the areas that aren't in the inner colonies and the core worlds uh, can become, especially after they've, you know, been decimated by Covenant forces or just sort of left to fend for themselves. And so you do have a little bit of uh, empathy toward the insurrectionists, or at the very least, some of the people within the rubble, as far as, you know, why they do things the way that they do, why they sort of break away from the UNSC and don't follow these regulations and stuff, because they feel like they can do things better by themselves. Um, and, and you do get a sense of there being um, sort of go-getters, sort of uh, picking up the, the pieces after they, they suffer this defeat, and being innovators to a certain degree. Uh, we also understand that there are not some there are some people within the uh, insurrectionist rankings and, and within the rubble here that are not very nice people, and that there are some sort of underhanded dealings going on, some darker uh, plots, some selfish politics at play, and uh, that it's sort of a whoever has the most money or the most influence can sometimes sway the opinion of of the public, and so. Uh, to that end, there is, a, I think, a nicely complicated story here. We do have some cool action, more so toward the end of the story. Um, a lot of the, the combat scenarios and stuff uh, don't really come to fruition until the last third or so of the story. But it does a nice job of, I think, giving large chunks from each individual perspective in the story. You know, you'll have a good portion where it's, okay, here's Jacob Keyes, getting his promotions and stuff, and getting his new team, and, and earning the respect of the ODSTs that he's working with for sort of his gutsy, crazy uh, plans that he puts into action. Uh, then we have a perspective of a great team to sort of understand how they view the rubble and the, and the UNSC from being sort of a ghost unit within. Then we have Thel Vadam and sort of his understanding of how the uh, Covenant is working right now and where it's going and all that. Then we jump to some of the uh, citizens within the rubble, the civilian level people, the um, AI that runs the system and the fact that it's nearing its time of, of being becoming rampant. Then we'll jump back to Jacob Keys and we'll jump back to great teams. And it, it kind of follows this pattern of, okay, we're going to cycle through all the different groups as we build up to the sort of climax of this story. Um, it is pretty single-minded in its focus uh, as far as what the plot is here, and I think that that's a good thing because some of the Halo novels get a little too s deeply uh, rooted in the um, the history of, of the UNSC versus the Covenant and starts referencing a bunch of stuff that, if you have only played the games, makes it hard for you to jump into the context here. Um, this is not the case in this novel. They, they do reference some major battles, they do reference some uh, important figures in the UNSC Covenant struggle, but it's not anything that you couldn't, I think, pick up with a quick Google search. Um, the things that they do reference, they also bring back up a number of times over the course of the story and sort of expand upon. So, you know, if you don't recognize a name of a planet or uh, the name of an individual right off the bat, there's a fair chance that later on they will go ahead and further explain that. Um, Gray Team, I think it's smart that they're a small Covenant, or sorry, a small Spartan group. Um, it helps sort of balance the characters a little bit better. Uh, it would have been cool to have this huge group, but at the same time, it doesn't really make sense to have a bunch of Spartans hiding on this uh, sort of outlying colony. Uh, makes sense to have three of them, and then that be it. And I like the fact that because this is earlier in the Human Covenant War, that the Spartans are sort of these myths, these legends, that people don't actually know if they exist, and when the uh, the UNSC forces, as well as the civilians, encounter them, they don't really know what to make of them, they don't know if they're allies, or if they're just kind of going to go rogue on them at any given point. Um, so it's kind of cool to see this sort of fragile uh, alliance that they have between the Spartans and everyone else. Uh, but that said, I think it is a solid read. Um... I think this collection as a whole is a really good value, and then the fact that you get some uh, very different stories with very different perspectives, uh, as well as different points in the timeline of 
the Halo, the larger Halo story, uh, is pretty cool. Um, I think the biggest selling point for me over the other box set collection is the fact that this isn't just about Master Chief and everybody that we are familiar with. I mean, some of the other Spartans do show up in Ghost of Onyx. Obviously, Sergeant Johnson is a big part of Contact Harvest, and Keys is a big part of this, but there's so many other characters, so many other events going on that uh, it really makes it worthwhile for me to, to recommend this, I think, as, as something that better expands the understanding of, of the Halo universe and the events that have gone on there. So that is pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.